Okay, good evening everyone. We are just starting the stream and we are going to be populating the link around. Please give us a couple of minutes to do so. Sorry, we're starting a bit late. We had a few technical issues, but we will be underway very soon. Just sending the link about. So, Chris, if you wouldn't mind sharing this for me, good sir. That's the Facebook link. And we are also live on YouTube. If you're just joining in, say hello to us. Let us know that you're in and watching. We want lots of participation today. Lots and lots of participation. Hopefully you've all got your builds ready to show us. Yeah, gonna be ready in a couple of minutes. Sorry, it takes so long to get this link shared about. And here's the next one. Okay. Awesome, right, we have, okay, we've already got people in. Peter Jansen, Stephen Reeve, Bill is in, Richard Cancross, um, Alban Baraf, uh, Chris, could you, well, we'll 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 distribute the Zoom link um, in a minute to anyone that wants it, and I've just got to send one last thing. We will be starting in one minute. One minute. Here we go, nearly there. And done. Okay, welcome to the live build, everybody. Sorry for the long preamble there, but we have to send the link out to everyone that has requested it so that we can get people from far afield joining in and make sure everyone's got enough time to start at the start before Josh carries on. So. Thank you very much for joining us on this very pleasant Sunday evening. Um, we are going to go, through, I think we're going to finish the kite today. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we've got bridle and frame to do, and Josh is going to show us all of the tricks. Um, how's it going, Josh? Uh, it's not bad at all, mate. I'm looking forward to um, showing everybody how to finish these kites today. Um, by the end of today, we should have a full array of complete kites so that yeah that should be great fantastic so we are going to finish tonight we are absolutely going to finish tonight yes oh exciting now we have had a couple of people that have actually already finished naughty naughty they haven't been following the build and uh, they decided to just crack on and finish without us well that's not very fair you know who you are um but okay are we are we ready to get started? If you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. I am ready, sir. Okay. Uh, which camera would you like? Uh, we'll do the front facing because I'm going to talk through what we're going to do first. Okay. Uh, right. Great. So, on you. so uh, today, like we've just said, we're going to be finishing everything. The at this point now, the point is we have the sail which we finished sewing last week. We're going to do the holes in the sail to apply the bungees. We're going to put the bungees and the caps on. We're going to tie our bridles, apply our bridles, make frames, and put the frames in the kite. Bob's your uncle, complete kite. So um, we're going to start with finishing the kite skin before we move to the framing. So we'll, the framing will be the last thing we do. Um, so the way we're going to start with that, uh, you're going to need skin, your template, uh, your tip template, 
and your soldering iron. Um, soldering iron we need, we need a nice sharp point on this one. Um, and yeah, so if you guys start heating up the soldering irons, um, we will be on the way and get started. This is definitely um, the most exciting part. Oh yeah. This it kind of starts coming together really quickly, doesn't it, at this point? Absolutely. At this point is where you can see the finish line, you know, it's that sprint and you're almost there. So, yeah, um, I'm excited. I hope you and you can excited. And you can have a bit of fun and, and sort of, you can, it's, a, it's a bit more of a relaxed pace than, uh, than what we've been used to in previous weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right, so that's all the irons heating up. Um, first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to be applying the holes into our tips so that the bottom uh, bungees and caps can come out the bottom. Um, you should have, uh, mine's in metal because admittedly I lost my paper template, um, but you guys should all have your templates and there should be two holes on that template. And all you're going to do, um, you want to perforate those holes so you can get a pencil through or something to mark uh, your uh, your sail with. Um, I'm going to stick this under here so you guys can hope to have a bit of a better view. Um, so all we're doing is we're lining up that template with the exact edges of the kite and you can see that it does fit exactly as it should. I'm going to take a pencil and through the two holes just put two marks in and they should in, uh, they should sit inside the inside the seams on the edge so they should be on the Dacron itself. Um, and we're going to do that on both sides. Um, just uh, a quick um, note that Peter has asked about caps. Peter will cover end caps um, just slightly later on. But I have I have noted your question. OK, so, um, yeah, so at this point, we've marked the two holes on the tip, uh, sorry, the four holes on the tips, uh, two on each side. And we're going to move across to the leading edge. So, first of all, you want to get both sections of your sail um, and fold it directly in half, lining up your leading edge. And if, what we're going to do, we're just going to put a little bit of a crease right at the center um, so that you can see the exact center of that leading edge. And the next hole we're going to mark is we're going to follow that crease for the ruler and we're going to go two centimeters down on that crease line. So that should, it should be about five mil above the mesh if you're using 25 mil Dacron. Uh, but yeah, that's two centimeters down into the leading edge. Now, our good, uh, our good friend Watty has asked a question. Um, yeah. Any opinions on bungee holes closer together versus further apart? Um, ah, yes, um, that's an interesting one. Um, the bungee hole, I, I assume he's referring to the, the tips, not the... Right I, I assume so, I assume so. Yeah, um, I, I quite like them um, quite spread apart because I find it grips more of the sail and pulls it to the point. Um, but I know some people, they get really close down on the edge of the, the tip and quite close together, but it really pulls the sail tight from that perspective. Um, but we're actually gonna pull it in from quite a, quite a wide position. Um, okay, yeah. so yeah, go. Yep, so we're, we're, we're it's in a wider, we're currently doing a wider version, yeah? Absolutely. Right, so yeah, we've, we've uh, folded in the center, we've marked two centimeters down for that hole. Now we're gonna move across to the reinforcement um, on the leading edge, the internal one. Um, and what we're gonna do, we're just gonna actually fold that in half on the reinforcement so that you get this, this line of, uh, you can match it up through the mesh and give it a direct fold and a direct crease. And again, that's the same, so following that crease line, same uh, distance down at two centimeters and just making a little mark. Watty's joined us in the Zoom room. Also, um, Chris has put the uh, Zoom. Chris has put the Zoom room link in the chat. So if you want to join us, Rich, I know you've been uh, you were building along with us in there. So if you want to 
jump in, then by all means jump in. Any, every, anyone's welcome in at this point, so uh, feel free to just follow that link and come and come and say hi. Come join us. Come on down. Okay, so what we're doing again, just as we've done before, we're matching it on the other side. So fold the reinforcement in half, so you've got your crease line and two centimetres down. And I'm putting these holes at two centimetres, and that should be just above the stitch line, so you're not actually damaging any of the stitching. Um, if you're if you're using a hot tip and poking it through, it will actually melt the stitching into the Dacron, so it will hold. But it's best if you can avoid damaging the stitching so it continues as one continuous length. Um, and the final two holes that we need to mark before we start burning the holes in are these two holes on the leading edge. So I'm just going to show you guys. Um, so the template you should have, there should be two holes which align here. Um, again, those holes are two centimetres down. Um, and the... So the first hole we're aligning is actually directly aligned with the bottom of the Dacron, two centimeters in. So we have this line here, which your, your Dacron stops there. You continue this up and two centimeters down, or you can just match the template if that makes it easier for you. So I have my template here. Uh, yeah, so again, it's reversed, but you can see the two holes that we're talking about. Yeah, that's them. Yeah. So if you want to uh, perforate those holes and copy that, uh, with, you can do that easier. Um, I'm just going to mark these on here. Uh. So what you're marking with just a pencil. Just a pencil, yeah, but you can use anything which is going to leave a clear mark. So, uh, the markings are done. We're ready to put the holes into the sail. So, the tip should be nice and hot now. Um, last week we said uh, it was between 400 and 450 degrees, um, and you'll get a nice clean cut. Yeah, Mark, um, Mark went away and did his research for us, and uh, yeah, we're, we're between 400 and 450, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, just where we've made the marks, um, on the point of your mark, you're going to pierce it at your soldering iron, so you've got a roughly a three millimetre hole. The, the closest you can get to three millimetres is the better. Um, anything bigger, you'll not have the potential to pull through. Um, if you guys use the templates, you that hole, the hole that I've marked on there for you guys, they are three millimetres. So if you can uh, trace around that mark, then that is the perfect dimension for what it should be. Um, but I've actually got a marking on my soldering iron tip where it tells me that the diameter of the tip at that point is, is three millimeters. So all we're gonna do, um, and you do this from the back of the sail for the bottom tips. Um, so you're gonna match up that marking and just burn the hole in, so it's three millimeters. Three millimeters. And it should be nice and clean for you on the other side and nice and clean on the back. Very tidy. We're just going to repeat that process four times um, for the bottom tips. So everyone at home, just remember, take your time. This is not the point in the build to be making a mistake because you have a perfect sale ready to be finished. So just be very, very cautious and take your time when making your house. I, I always find this part quite high pressure. So I always have to take a, a drinking break between steps. <laughs> I am I am massively nervous just watching. Same again, three millimeter hole. And remember, Josh is making a kite that's going to be raffled off. Um, now we will be doing the raffle and the draw next week and a live where we do a live debrief where you can all just either pile into Zoom, um, send us pictures, send us videos, show us your finished kites. So that is when we're going to be raffling it off. But I can tell you that we have had so many donations um, from so many different people that it's, it's crazy. 
remember the money we're, we're not asking for donations directly this is people that are donating to their own causes and then just sending us proof that's that's all you have to do to get entered in uh last week i donated live on camera i'm not taking part i'm not taking part but just to show you how easy it is to do so yeah um yeah if you want to be in it if you want to win it you've got to be in it and you've got to donate so there we go yeah. Okay, so we've done the two t uh, t the tips. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> um, and we're just going to move on to the, the next section of the sale. Um, so it's the two holes on the leading edge, and again, it's the same process. But bearing in mind here, you have more layers of Dacron to get through. So just take your time. Um, if you, it's so easy to slip and mess up the entire kite at this point. Um, so remember, either using the stencil on the template or if you have a three millimeter mark, it's the same uh, same diameter. So just push it through to three millimeters. Yeah, three millimeters. And that's four holes. And it should be nice and clean and parallel like that. And from the back. And again, we're repeating that process on both sides. I have a question, Josh. Could you achieve the same thing if you didn't have a side ring iron, say if, like, if you were to use a punch? Um, you can do it with a punch. That's absolutely fine. Um, however, a punch, you can potentially have fraying involved because there's no seal around that edge. Um, Josh, I I'm going to have to stop you just for two seconds because... Um, I'm not going to put this necessarily on everyone's screen, but can everyone see that? No. Um, a very, very, very large donation has just been made by Mr. Um, Alban Baraf. So well done, Alban, uh, to your your charity. Thank you, Alban. Thank you. <laughs> a, yeah, thank you very much. Serious donation. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry, Josh, carry on. Um, yeah. So again, we're just repeating on both sides of the sail. So it's the same as we got before. Nice and slow up to the three millimeter mark. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, again, all the way through. And they should be nice and parallel. Again, clean on both sides. So the, uh, the next hole we're doing is this hole here in the center. And again, it's the same process. It's the same process for all of these holes. Um, just take your time, be careful, and yeah, don't stress about it. I suppose is the best tip I can give because if you stress, you shake. So um, has anyone out there watching at home got any questions about any of the previous bits that um, we've covered so far? Because let me tell you, now is the time to ask because you have the man in front of you primed and ready. Um, so if you've got any questions, chuck them in the comments on Facebook or on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, right. Yeah. All your holes Josh, made, Josh? No, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to make sure that my camera's not dropping in and out. <laughs> no, 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 we're good. We're good. Trust me, I'll, I'll tell you if you get any dropouts. Okay. So, Josh, do these have to be at two centimetres down? Because uh, I'm going to take the tip off my stitching if I take put it at two centimetres. Yeah, so, um, I, like I was saying before, um, it... Uh, it doesn't have to be two centimeters. You can do 1.5, but you need to allow enough room for that rod in the, in the top of the um, the tunnel. Um, if you do take the top, uh, the if you do pierce the stitching, um, it will sort of weld itself with the the other fabric there. So it, it's not necessarily a weak point, but it's it's suggested and it's better not to damage the stitching along the way. Thanks, Mike. One thing that I kind of look for there for using that zigzag stitch, when it does a downward zigzag, then I usually just try to put the hole right in between in that little downward zigzag, wherever it ha that happens to fit. 
Yeah. Um, well, actually, that's exactly what we're about to do. Um, very good tip. <laughs> so, um, Alban has also uh, suggested that it's good to practice with your soldering iron and Dacron um, before you actually go ahead on your kite, just so you can get a feel for, for what it's going to do when you actually touch. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Um, right, so I have pierced the sail. All my holes are in there. Um, the sail is now completely finished. So there's nothing more we need to do to the sail. All the stuff we're doing now is additions. Um, so what we're going to do next, we're going to cut our bungees to go into the sail. Um, so just hide your sails for the minute or, well, yeah, hide them. Don't ever see them again. Um, <laughs> go and hide them from yourself, yeah. Yeah. Right, so um, the elastic I'm using is a three millimeter elastic. It's quite strong. You, you can get some weak elastics, um, but I try and use the strongest elastics I can find so it's, it keeps the tension in the sail. Um, and the length we're going to go for um, initially is fi uh, 15 centimeters. Um, and the way I'm cutting my um, bungee is like you would cut the Dacron. So you're going to press down and just slowly work your way through it. And it should melt and seal itself. Try not to breathe in any of those fumes because they are not healthy for you. Um. <laughs> yeah, may, don't be hovering above them uh, as, as you take nice big lungfuls. No, <laughs> def definitely not, definitely not. Uh, yeah, so like I say, we're, we're cutting these at 15 centimeters. Um, and I do this the same way that I do the panels. It's just use a straight edge and just run along the side of it nice and slowly. And you end up with a nice clean cut at the end of the sail, uh, at the end of the bungee. Um, and what you can do from there, you, you don't necessarily need to keep measuring them. Um, you can use the ones that you've already cut um, to just give your, your reference point for the rest. Uh, you need six of these, by the way. I, I just had a Facebook message there, but 15 centimeters in what form? Um, this is in its basic form, not stretched out. Because <laughs> most of us normally measure stretched out. <laughs> well, that, that's completely up to you, Matt. I'm just saying, you know, every little helps. Actually, no, it's, it's not up to you. Do it my way. I don't do it at all. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, 100%. So uh, we've had uh, Craig Rogerson uh, says, I use a bar of aluminium, could be wood, next to, next to mark to lean tip against, corrugated underneath, which steadies a shaky hand. There we go. That's a good tip. Very good tip. So I'm coming up on number five now. And remember, don't breathe these fumes in. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't don't hover your head directly over the top of it. Yeah, don't do exactly what I'm doing right <laughs> yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um just coming up to number six. So um, has anyone got any finished builds out there that they want to show us? Has anyone jumped the gun and already uh, wrapped theirs up, ready to go? Can, can we see any of those? Anyone going to send us any pictures? And who is in the middle of a build? Who Who is... Uh, I'm very interested to see where Rich is at with his build. I'm hoping that he'll jump into the Zoom at some point. Um, Rich, if you're listening, we'd love to have you in so just click the link and come and say hi okay so um we've cut the bungees we can now turn the soldering irons off for the minute um because the next step is we're gonna apply um the, um the uh i have lost my words today and we're gonna apply the bungees and the caps to the sail So we need our sail, 
we need four washers. Uh, washers I'm using are three millimeter to eight millimeter outer washers. So the, the internal diameter is three millimeter. Okay. Um, and we're gonna need six end caps. Um, and someone asked earlier, what, what end caps are you using? What What's your preferred style? Um, so you can get these on eBay. They're just called one uh, so quadline kite end caps. Um, they're unbranded. They're, yeah, they're really good. They fit most rods. Um, Excellent. I have, yeah. And they I'm pleased to say, I'm pleased to say that we actually have Rich has just joined us. Uh, so hello, Rich. Uh, hello, Rich. He's waving. Yes. Hello, mate. Josh, um, Peter has a question. Yeah. Uh, Peter Loop is asking, how many quad line kites have eliminated the top vertical bungees and caps? Do you know? Um, the, well, I don't know an exact number. Um, there, there is a lot that do it now. Um, yeah, it's uh, it, it seems to be the way that um, people are going for snaggless leading edges, and it really does work. Um, I know that on one of my models, I used that technique because it does it, it eliminates that slag. <laughs> that slag completely. <laughs> Sorry, my... uh, Freudian slip. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, Rich is asking about what was the washer size. Sorry. Uh, so three millimeter internal diameter to eight millimeter outer diameter. One note on the, the snagless leading edge part. Um, I know I, I've, I've been using T fittings as of lately um, on the tops. And one thing that's a little bit strange about that is that now your rod sits below the leading edge rod. And so I had to make my sails, cut my sails to be maybe uh, eight millimeters or so taller than normal because now the rod sits lower. Um, so if you're, you know, that's one thing that's a little bit strange if you're shifting towards that. Yeah. Um... That's a good point, actually. Um, you, yeah, I don't suggest trying the tape pieces with this build at the minute because that will overcomplicate and be like what he says, the sale will be out of proportion if you do that. Um, yeah, so um, I've got my uh, bungees and my washers and my caps ready. So we're, are we good to put them onto the kite, Mark? Are you, are you ready for that step? I think we are 100% ready, yeah. Okay, great. So um, we're going to do the lower tips first um, because I find that's a good place to start. It gets most parts out of the way. Um, so you're threading your bungee through your cap um, and then threading it through the front of the sail at both poles. Um, and that's both ends of the bungee. So the cap will end up on the front. On the, the front kite. of the kite, yeah. yeah. So you should have two open-ended pieces of bungee at the back of the kite. And you, you, this is where you're applying our washer. So the washer goes onto the back of this, uh, the kite, one on each side. Um, and yeah, and then the knot we're going to tie is two centimeters into the bungee. So, uh, my and it's just an overhand knot, so it's a simple knot, two centimeters in, like so. And that's on both sides. Um, you're starting the knot at two centimeters, so that should be the central point. Um, and you should have about 1.5 centimeters uh, remaining after the knot. Um, um, so that's complete. It should sit. And the, the cap should not sit below the kite at this stage. So when you elasticate it, it's cap goes that goes behind the sail. Okay, yeah. So you tie, start your knot at 20 mil in from the end, 
and then Excellent. when it's tied you should be left with 15 mil tails on each side and the uh the end cap does not extend past the the actual tip itself yeah and that's the same on both sides um i'll just go through that again for you guys just in case you missed it so threading through from the front of the kite so the cap is on the front of the kite open-ended at the back two washers on and then two centimeters to start your knot the size and that's on there and again it shouldn't fall below the bottom of the sail at this stage uh, okay so that is that knot uh, the next one we're going to do is the outside of the leading edge so it's these two holes here and it's very similar to the previous step in its first stage so threading the cap and on the front of the sail we're going through the front. Again, both sides through the two holes. So that the kite, uh, so that the cap sits with a loop with, from the front of the uh, sail. And then what we're going to do, we're going to pull the cap flush with the leading edge for this stage. And it's just going to make it a little bit easier for the next step. Because we're tying this knot 2.5 centimeters in and this is with both sections of the, uh, the bungee and again just an overhand knot that should leave about two centimeters of bungee removed and the cap should be almost flush with the top of the leading edge if you were to run it up and down There's another interesting approach on, on this part for those overachievers. Um, if, if you have just one hole, you can split open the hole and you can bring the bungees into the leading edge and out, out of the uh, end of the pocket and then zip tie them together and then pull it back out. And so now you just have bungee just going into the leading edge. The zip tie sits there in the bottom of the leading edge. Um, and so you can get rid of all that, that knots and stuff. Nice. So another step towards snagless. Absolutely. So we're just finishing off the other side now. So again, that knot starts at 2.5 and leaves two centimeters. And flush with the leading edge. And now we've only got one more bungee to put on. Okay. It's, uh... It's really coming together now. Absolutely. So for this stage, we're actually going to put the bungee through the kite before we attach the cap. Before we End put the cap, cap on. Yeah. That's the one. I keep saying cat. I think I'm... I, yeah, <laughs> you I'm have cats on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, if you will stay up doing these, uh, you know, live sessions, you know. Uh, right. So... Um, once the bungee is pierced through the sail, you're going to put the cap onto the front of the kite. If, uh, if you put this onto the back, you're going to have a knot on the front of the kite, and that's going to snag a lot easier. So cap onto the front. And then this time, we're tying the knot at four centimeters in. Um, and that four centimeters should get the knot flush with the leading edge. Um, so it should be sitting really quite tight, but not compressing the leading edge tunnel. Josh, do you have like a preferred brand of caps or anything of that sort? Um, just like I was saying before, um, so these caps you can get on eBay. Um, quad line caps, they're called. Um, I know for some of my other models, I, I have custom designed caps, um, which are manufactured by a very good friend of mine to a brilliant quality. Um, but yeah, you can get caps from this, this, uh, the typical Revolution cap. There's the, the quad line cap, as I mentioned before. Um, I know John Barassi has a 
personal capper uses on his gin models. Um, yeah, th there's quite a few cap options out there now. But no, I, some would say, like, I, I am not a cap brand snob, I suppose. <laughs> you'll, you'll get into bed with any cap. Uh, Do you well, have I'm a not preference? Sure. Do you have a preference when it comes to cap, like plastic or aluminum or? Um, I so the caps that I use are a. Uh, I couldn't tell you which what kind of plastic they are. Um, I'm sure somebody could tell well, me. <laughs> the the uh, do you mean the black ones or the blue no, ones? So shall we say? I I have um, blue caps that I use. I think they're nylon. Um, no, no, they're not I nylon. I don't think they are. <laughs> um, it's all right. We we we, they're PMMA. Are they? Are they really? How how yes. did you know that? <laughs> um, just I just remembered. A little I have fairy. It, I, I have it on good authority. So, so Matt, I would not get into bed with any cap. I would only get into bed with my PM and these caps. Okay, apart from the the nylon ones that you're putting on at the moment. Apart from these caps, I, I suppose I could make uh, a little bit of space for these caps. <laughs> okay. So um, now that the caps are on the kite, and um, you see that the it's flush with the leading edge, but it's not compressing the leading edge. And what I mean by that is it's not folding any of this stuff on. It's sitting just nice and tight. Um, and now that you've tied these, you can see that you actually have quite a bit of excess bungee. Um, so what I tend to do is I'll just go with scissors and I'll just take that excess off. But for the purpose of this um, uh, tutorial, I'm going to leave it on because I'm going to show you guys what happens if the, the tension of the cap isn't quite right so we can manually adjust these. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Maybe a small uh, note. When you mention cutting up with the scissors, just at least take a lighter to it or something yes. afterwards. That, yeah, that'll yeah, of course. like crazy if you don't. Um. Yeah, right. So that is the next. Sorry, step. sorry, Josh. Before you carry on, uh, is Tom von K has said only washers for the tips? Question mark. Yes, only washers on the tips. Um, some people use a half inch tap washer on the leading edge to combine your knots, um, but I prefer not to. I, I find it's more to snag on, and it doesn't have uh, as good as an effect as what I. But for my personal, I, yeah, I don't use them. Do you have to use washers at all? Yes. Uh, if you don't use washers on the tips, your knots will absolutely pull through and you'll, you'll end up um, almost tearing yourself. Um, yeah. Right. Um, cool. I'm going to take a quick drink break because that always uh, is a high pressure. But I'm, Matt, if we can move across to you for a minute. I yeah, like absolutely, mate. Um, so, uh, yes, right. Hello, everyone. Now, who has donated and who hasn't donated? We want to see some more donations coming in. Now, we have donated nearly, nearly a thousand pounds, stroke euros, almost definitely a thousand dollars. Um, crazy amount crazy amount all you have to do pick a charity of your choice any charity doesn't matter what it is pick a charity donate three pounds three euros or three dollars that's all you have to do show us the proof and you will get entered into the draw it is as simple as that so whilst we're having a quick break get your phones out Dial up your charity pages on the internet, do a donation, and you will get entered in, and you might win one of the two kites that Josh is building, stroke built for the live builds. So let's see where the team are all at with their kites. Mark, can we see your kite? Where where are you up to? Hold on. Uh... Well, it, uh, I've got the bottom bungees on. To begin with, oh, so they're on, but uh, I'm having to go around and widen the holes out because I wasn't brave enough the first time round. Well, uh, and then we're, we're going to start. Well, to be fair, again. I don't <laughs> think that's I don't think that's a bad thing. 
um, not being brave. I think it's better to be cautious uh, as, as opposed to going gung-ho. But I'm impressed that you've got your bottom bungees on already. Well done. Okay, who have we got next? Uh, we've got Rich. Can you hear me, Rich? Yeah. Rich is there. Can you uh, hold on? Let's unmute yep. Rich hey. and let's go to Rich's video. Oh, wow. Hello. Wow. Look at this masterpiece. I got all the bungees on. And um, for right now, it looks like my, my, my rods in the leading edge are a little bit long because I'm out okay. the pull them really tight to get them in. So I might have to trim them a little bit. Okay. Well, we're coming up to frame. So that's right. the time. I'm sure Josh has got some uh, interesting bits and pieces that he can okay. throw in your direction. I won't cut anything yet then. No, don't. For the love of God, don't cut anything yet. Um, but also, I mean, fair play. You're keeping up with Josh on those bungees. Um, so that's that's a pretty impressive thing to do. Thanks. Um, who else? Uh, I know Chris hasn't done his yet. Uh, so we'll come back to me and... Uh, if you haven't seen, um, I'm going to go and get my kite, so bear, bear with me. Bear with me, bear with me. Now, sadly, I have been at work all this week. I know it's not an excuse. However, if we didn't, if any of you didn't see them last week, we have a colour scheme that you may recognise if you follow the Fracture Boys. Yes, I'm desperately trying to get into the team, but they're totally ignoring my advances. So that's that. And then we have uh, one that we made for my co-host, Mr. Meldrum, which is something that I'm calling the Wimbledon 2020. Okay, <laughs> so there we go. That's going to head to Chris. And then I really do hope he's watching. Um, but my the lovely... Graham that I fly with on a Sunday. This is the DDOG colours, the Dunstable Downs, old gents colours, and that will be heading its way to Graham and Josh's building bills. So has anybody got any kites that they can show us in the live chat? I'm going to just switch my screen and see any place to get end caps in bulk. Um, I don't know, but Craig did just put a nice link up for eBay to get uh, to get some caps. Um, yeah. So, any donations? No, not yet. Come on, people. It's very easy. I did it last week. I showed you how to do it. You've got no excuses. So, uh, Josh, are we ready to rock and roll on the next bit? We absolutely are. It's bridling time. Did you have a nice comfort break? Uh, I did. I had a nice uh, swig of, um, yeah, uh, uh, well, we're not endorsed by this brand, so I won't name the brand. Oh, okay, fine. Right. Um, so, camera back on you. Good, sir. Great. Right. Uh, it's bridal line time. Um, so, I hope everybody got the PDF of the bridal. Um, we've had a lot of messages going, it doesn't make sense, and that's perfectly understandable um, because, well, in its current form, it doesn't make sense. You, you need this bit of knowledge to go along with it. And that's absolutely fine. <laughs> um, so um, this this way that I put bridles together is in, done in a sense where you can wrap off 15, 20, 30 bridles in one go and they will all be identical. Um, the majority of stuff I do is team kites. Um, and I feel that team kite bridles have to be identical. Um, so if this method works for you guys, feel free to adopt it. If it doesn't, you know, you don't have to adopt it. Um, so what I'm going to do, um, we're going to take our length of line. Um, I'm using 150 pound Spectra um, or Dyneema as we call it. Um, but if you guys have a 150 pound equivalent bridal line, that's also great as well. Um, the this bridal plan has been um, done for a line the width of 150 pound. Um, anything bigger, your knots will be bigger and the, the dimensions will be slightly out. So Josh, um, what is the, just so people can compare to the line that they've got, what is the approximate diameter of the line that you've got there? Um, it's about one, 1 1.5 mil. Okay, so basically as long as your braking strain is enough, okay, 
i.e. more than your main line strength and your the diameter of your line is approximately mil to one and a half mil the bridle plan should work for you just fine yeah right so the bridle itself. don't be don't be going out using baler twine though that's not a good idea so so no dental floss okay definitely um, no dental floss you can fly the kite on dental floss but i wouldn't use it for the bridle uh, there we go top tip <laughs> right okay so um here we are um so on the, the um, we're going to do the top section of the bridle first and i'm just going to stop this falling off my table um what we're going to need we're going to need um some different color sharpies because we're actually going to mark the line and um, i'm using very very nice colors um if, uh, yeah anybody's favorite color in here there's a random question um so what we're going to do we're actually going to measure along the the bridle line and just mark at these different intervals which you can see and um, the the measurements are the distances between the marks so not the measurement uh, not the distance along the line and um, so for instance uh, we're going to make a first mark so that would be the first red mark on the bridle and that's our starting point so from there you're measuring from your starting point and the first mark is 16 centimeters along the bridle and it's important that you do, uh, so there's, they're color coordinated on the plan. If you try and keep the marks the same color, it'll make your life a lot easier. So 16 centimeters so is I'm, the second I'm minute. actually gonna try and get the, um, the PDF in front of me so I can do a screen share and we can just point the different parts out. Yeah. Um, one thing that um, I did, forgot to mention is, uh, this bridle line, or sorry, this line has already been sealed. Um, but at the starting point, you want to make sure the end of your line is sealed so that it doesn't fray. So when you've got the measurement, the measurement must include the fact that you've already sealed the ends of your lines. No. No? Um, so what you can see is I've sealed the line. And then about a couple of centimeters in, I've made my first mark. And this is my starting point. Right. OK. Okay, um, but I'll make I'll make that clear to why in a minute. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I've just done my second, uh, sorry, my first mark, um, and I can see that the next one is thirty six point three centimeters along, but it's a different color. So I suggest changing up the color sharpie. Again, you'll see why in a moment. So it's thirty six point three, and then the next mark is again a different color. So changing up the color. Um, and that mark is at 11 centimeters. So again, you're measuring from the previous mark you've just made. So the... I'm just going to put this on the screen for everyone. Can everyone see that? Yeah. Yep. That's up there. Okay. So um, do you want to explain the colored marks? Can you see on there? Yeah, so, so the first mark that there you're, you've just pointed out is the first mark that I made after I sealed the line. Yeah, okay, um, so the, 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 your, your line is here somewhere where my cursor is, Yeah. the end of your line, and then the first mark, bang, there. Yes, and then you can see that the first mark is a red mark. Yeah. Um, and the second mark is a red mark. However, the next mark after that is a blue mark, so that's where you need to change the colour, and you need to match these colours when marking the line. Yeah, so as you go down, and this this 36.3, this is from the start? Uh, no, from the it's previous from, mark. Okay, from, from, yeah, so yeah. it's all cumulative. So first mark out is 16, next one is 36.3 from that first mark, and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. Okay, um, let's go back to your screen. No problem. So I've just done the mark. Um, it's the one, two, three. It's the fifth mark along. So I'm now moving to 11 centimeters. Um, and I can see that the blue mark, I don't have a blue pen, so I'm using green. <laughs> and I'm making well, that mark. Well, I actually bought some metallic Sharpies because my bridle line will be black. And I was worried oh. about seeing the uh, the marks on, on the line. 
on the line is that you i was gonna say talking? do i do i have to pay myself for advertising mm. for the the uh, the channel yeah. um, so i've just done my 54.4 centimeters and, and now i'm at the halfway line um and you can see that it says halfway reflection uh, reflect line marks so what we're going to do uh, from the 54.4 centimeter we're going to do mark the eight centimeter mark like, put a mark in the chat. We keep saying the word mark so many times. You probably think we've been talking. Well, you can you can watch him if you if you watch him every time you say mark, he he lifts his head up. <laughs> right. So um, we've just done these marks, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you can see that now there's the two pink marks, um, which it marks the center of the kite. So this point here, this this crease is my central point of the bridle, and all we're going to do is we're going to fold down that central point. And I actually use, um, you can't see it on this camera, um, but I use a loop. And I'm going to lock set the center point to that loop, making sure that the pink marks still line up. And you'll see why in a second. So these pink marks are here. And I'm just going to stretch that out along my table. Um, and from each mark, you're going to go along and mirror the marks we've just done. So where there's a red mark, you're going to do it on the other side of the line. Um, and that's so we can make up two equal halves. And you're going to mark that on the line, are you? I'm going to mark that on the line. That's, that, that's going to be £2.50 at least. <laughs> yeah. So again, we're just matching the marks. Um, and if you, you feel like you're going to miss one, just um, just follow your bridal plan and just start at the beginning and move along. Um, you can measure them out um, if you feel more comfortable doing that. But what I find is that sometimes you might be a millimeter off and it's for a bridal, it's really important that they're completely equal on both sides. So mirroring what you have here, even if there's a slight discrepancy, you're going to get a better character, uh, better flying characteristics out of the kite because they are equal. So I'm just green mark there, there's another green mark. Uh, and I've missed an orange mark. <laughs> so that's why if you follow the plan along, you won't miss them. So we have had join us recently, your teammate, Dan. Have we? We've, yeah, we've also had uh, Brian Williamson and none other than Mr. Simon Dan has also joined us. Fantastic. Hello, everyone. Oh, they can't see me, but I was waving. Okay, so um, what I've just done, I've just marked all the line and I've matched the point where this bridle ends. Um, so you can see that the two red marks are there. This is where I started. And I'm just going to snip this here. And then all I'm going to do is give it a flash with a lighter. And that's sealed the bridle. Um, so... What we're going to do next, um, I'm actually going to show you guys how what the marks are for before we go on to the vertical section so that if you, um, so you have an understanding of why we're doing this. Um, so, just let me unhook that. Now, Peter's asking, some people use um, bridal boards uh, to yes. tie consistent bridles. Is it better or more, more work that than it's worth well i actually use a bridal board um in a sense but my bridal board is marked up with the points that i make the marks so it's um the good thing about a bridal board is if you use the bridal board over and over again you know you're getting the same bridal complete um so but the way that you use that bridal board so some people have like um pins that they move the bridle around and tie at certain points um, i use this method um so I, i'll put my line on the bridal board and make all my marks um, and then I'll show you guys what I then do. Um, yeah. D does that answer your question? Yes, but I, I think it's going to become a lot clearer when we've seen the masterpiece that's about to happen. Yes. So um, you can see on the line here, that's another two pound map. <laughs> um, there's the two red marks. And what we're going to do, we're going to marry the marks up next to each other um, so that you can see that they are exactly in line with each other. And then at these marks, you're going to make an overhand knot. Um, 
And when you're sure that they're lined up, you're gonna seal your knot in. Nice and tight. And that is the first point of your bridle. You're gonna to move to your next mark, which is the green. Now, with this one, you have your green mark and your orange marks, or sorry, they're the blue and brown on the bridle plan. Um, so that actually means that there is a, a knot inside of the knot. Um, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the green marks first, so the, um, the first knot you come to effectively, and it's the same again. So we're just doing another hand knot. And tying at that point. So it's marrying up at the mark and tying. And then if you've done it right, the two marks at this point should also line up. And again, same process, it's just another overhand knot at these marks. and they perfectly line up. And that, so you, what you can see there is you have your first knot and your second knot. So you have a knot contained within a loop, if that makes sense. Um, yep, that makes total sense. Now, yeah. I noticed that the marks, the marks that you're making, some are, are bigger than others. Is that on purpose or just? Um, that's just the ink spreading, but. Right, um, okay, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm effectively, I, I go on the basis that it spreads equally. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking for the center point of those marks. Okay, yeah, so that's, that was gonna be my next question. Do you aim for the center of the marks? Yeah. So then you're just you're following your marks all the way along the line. So the next two marks I've got are the pink marks and this actually makes up the center of the kite. Um, so marks are matched and again, overhand knot at the marks. You can see that that again another loops formed. At this point, you're halfway there. So it's again two green marks or blue on the bridal plan, and an overhand mark, uh, overhand knot at the marks. Okay, and again you can see that the oranges have lined up. Okay. Josh, do you have any funny bridal stories? Like, have you ever royally bombed one? Um, I've designed some crap bridles, but uh, I think anybody who's played with kite designs done that. Um, but no, I don't really have any funny bridal stories. How long? Um, how long did it take to come up with the? bridle for the mini pulse out of interest um i i worked on two editions of it um and the first one was pretty damn close and i just tweaked it a little bit and got the the final what you have in front of you awesome uh, but the the bridle is based on the static bridle uh, that is featured on most 1.5 platform quad lines cool um okay so that you should now have the first section of your bridle. Um, and the way that you should just check that these line up is if you just grab the, the, the two loops at the end and the loops in the center, which is made up by the pink mark, they should be perfectly equal. Uh, does that make sense? Is there any questions? Because I get bridling can be a little bit uh, daunting. I think it's uh, it's a lot easier now that I've seen the plan and I've seen you do it. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me, for sure. Um, any question? Uh, and it, it seems very repeatable as well. Yes. So um, one, once you've got a, uh, a bridle that if you're going to reproduce, um, I would suggest doing this method because it just makes bridle tying very, very easy, uh, especially if you incorporate a bridle board. Yeah, so if you were to have a board for the first part for your your uh, mark making, that seems to be sort of the ultimate way of doing it, but like a combination of the two. If you yes. were making lots of bridles. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I said, uh, we, this is um, the team method of making sure that you get bridles which are identical. Um, yeah. Right. So the next sections, uh, the vertical sections, you need two of these sections. Um, and it's the same process. So it's just making marks and tying loops. Um, I've just sealed the end before. So I'm going to start straight on with the first mark. Whilst you're, whilst you're just making those marks, I just want to uh, speak to Rich. I'm going to unmute you, Rich, so don't worry about that. Um, when it actually does it. No, Rich, you might have to unmute yourself. Oh, um, yeah, how, how, are you, uh, how are you finding that bridal method? Um, I like the bridal, bridal, bridal method. Uh, I've done one quad bridal before, and I tried making a bridal board. Um, but once I understood it was that, that the numbers were the distance between the marks uh, made a lot of sense. And then the color coding the marks really helps. So yeah, it's worked pretty good for me. Good, good. And uh, yeah, excellent. Okay, Josh. Yep, uh, I'm almost there. I do have one quick note that I like to do when I'm tying bridles. I, I usually take a, one of those fabric measuring tapes and I just kind of tape that down right on my table. So I have this just long measuring tape running all the way along my table. And then I just have this really nice long length that I can measure everything against and it's super handy. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea as well. Um, you can use smaller uh, rulers and you can see me measuring 30 and if it goes beyond 30, measuring again, uh, there's sometimes a little bit of movage in that. So that's a very good idea. Excellent. Awesome. So this is the first vertical part. Yes. And when you're not, when you don't have cameras in front of you, Josh, and you're, uh, let's say you're building um, a, a different bridle, but Let's say like uh, something like the XE. How yeah. how long does it normally take you to put a bridle together? Um, from using the bridle board and from a raw constant length of bridle line, um, I could put an XE bridle together in about 50 seconds. Uh, 50 seconds. But that's with the board. And again, I've done that like 300 times. It's second nature to me. <laughs> That's pretty quick. Uh, right. And final Mark, have you been following the bridle? No, he's shaking his head. No, no. Are you still doing, are you doing end caps? Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Oh, oh look, he's, he's cracking on. Excellent. Yeah. Sorry to everyone that can't see, but um, yeah, we'd, we're very interested to see what Josh is doing. So. But I want to watch Mark as well. <laughs> uh, fabric tapes, rulers. Oh, fabric tapes and rulers shrink. Be careful, is the advice from Peter Loop. So, how's how's Rich doing over there? He is. Let's have a look. Let's check in with Rich. Hey, Mark, both the verticals. Um, so I guess I'm tying knots on the verticals now. Fantastic. That's, wow. Okay. You're... It's only 50 seconds, so that's, uh, that seems extreme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think at this point you might be ahead of Josh. Um, so so you might, we might have to pace you down a bit, Rich, just in case. You know. All right, so I cheated. Earlier today, I, I took the measurements on the sheet and I marked them out on this big... Uh, oh, um, nice. And so I already had basically a bridal board on the table. <laughs> okay that's awesome cool, right. that's Thank awesome you. so um i'm just um i've just done my first vertical leg um, and same as before uh you want these sides to be completely identical so i'm actually running the second line along and matching the marks as opposed to matching the measurements on the on the template only because like i say there can be discrepancies due to human error um, and if you just match the marks you've already made, you're going to get a more accurate 
second half. Um, Jim just joined. Um, Jim Oates, he says, hi, everyone. I just joined. Can you tell me what you're using for the bridal, please? £150 mm. Spectra, a.k.a. £150 Dyneema. Is that right, Josh? Absolutely. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest using um, Spectra or Dyneema on a larger kite, but because of the size of this kite, it doesn't need to be anything more special than this. And we've all got snap line sets lying around the house. Fantastic. Okay, any questions from the viewing gallery or any questions from the Zoomers? Zoomers. That's not a <laughs> Zoomers. Yeah, well, I've got Mark's a question. Got one. Is this the same Spectra that they use for fishing line? It's very similar. Um, it's very, very similar. It's often found in work. company like uh, Laser Pro Gold is a really common Spectra line, and and Laser Pro makes a very makes a lot of fishing line as well. And Laser Pro Gold is just kind of an old product that they've kind of been hamstringed in keeping. <laughs> okay. Right. So I've just made my last mark, um, and I'm just cutting the excess off bridal that I don't need. And again, sealing that end. And then it's exactly the same as before. So now we're gonna go along the, the line and we're just gonna match up our colored marks. And by that point, we have a, essentially a full bridle. So, um... Vasilis is asking about um, are you using sleeved lines? Um, um, they're not sleeved at this moment in time. With the the bridle won't be sleeved, will it? No. Um, for a larger kite, though, you absolutely want to be used in sleeved bridle. So just the vertical parts to tie, and then I guess we will we'll be assembling it all into one piece, will we? We'll be assembling the bridle out off the kite at first, then applying it to the kite. Then we'll make the frame, we'll put the frame in, and that'll be the kite's complete. Fantastic, fantastic. Are there any more donations? Do people want to send me any more donations? Now, bear in mind, that uh, you don't have long, you don't have long to be uh, entered in. So get your donations in ASAP. You you are in with a chance of winning one of the two kites. So you've got two chances to win. Um, and the more you donate, the more times you get entered into the draw. So pick a charity of your choice, donate some money, show us the proof, and you'll be entered in. Simple as that. Where are we at with those bridles, Josh? With that bridle, I should say. Well, about 15 seconds off being complete. I mean, it looks like Rich is finished. I don't want to uh, put you under any pressure, mate. But... Yeah. Well... Sorry, I shouldn't distract you. It's all right. I'm used to it. Huh. Uh, so, ah, oh, right. Brian Williamson has put how Matt, and I'm assuming he means how can I donate? It's very easy. Okay. Think of a charity that you want to support. Okay. For example, uh, last week I donated to Great Ormond Street uh, Children's Hospital. Okay. Pick any charity you like. I'm not suggesting that you, you do gosh, but pick a charity of your choice. Go to their their page find a way of donating some money donate a minimum of three pounds three euros or three dollars okay but the more you donate the more times you get entered in and we'll enter you into the draw and we'll run the draw next week and you've got two there's two kites that you can win um so yeah 
if you got any if you want clarification just send me a message and i'll point you in the right direction if you want and to find the donation page to a charity send us a send us a message and we'll steer you in the right direction and it is literally so easy it literally just took me 60 seconds to donate to saint jude's oh there we go see we're, we're not even entering <laughs> no not even entering i'm just doing it to do it yeah excellent awesome so I i'm just about to cut the last section of this bridal guys um but yes um i actually know um so the few people that got onto the fact that we were doing this and there's been a lot of people um donating and not wanting to enter into the raffle um so thank you to everybody who's actually donated at all um yeah, you guys are doing really good stuff. Yeah, I um, I think I know you who you're talking about, and yeah, there was um, an another substantial, very very substantial donation made. Um, yeah. So and they didn't even want to be entered in. So there we go. <laughs> so uh, yeah, get donated, people. Right. Right. So uh, I've got my three sections of bridal. Um, and the connection loop, a 10 centimeter piece of line. Um, we're ready to put this thing together and put it onto the kite. So putting a bridle together, um, it's really, really easy. On the vertical loops, uh, the vertical section, sorry, you have the small loop at the top of the bridle. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna separate the loop so you can take the, the long, section um, from the top section of the kite um, and you've got the loops for, uh, the second knot in from the outside of the kite you're going to push the top section loop through this small loop but josh sorry josh before you carry on is it can you um sort of reference the colors that are on the plans um yes for the two knots that you're um, so at? you're actually matching up the blue loops on both okay well that's convenient yep that was, it was absolutely deliberate, you know, I, I totally <laughs> meant to do that. Yeah. Um, so, yes, what we're doing, we're passing it through the, the smaller loop. We're turning it back on itself and through itself. And then just pulling it tight and it should sit nicely in just like that. Yeah. And uh, you have to slow that right down on the on the next one. Absolutely. Sorry, I do it at a million miles an hour. No, that's OK. It's OK. <laughs> so blue loop separate the loop which which so which bit is the first bit you're holding up from which section the vertical section in my so, hand here yeah so you're taking your big loop from your top section pushing it through you're turning it back on itself so the big loop back on itself and through itself and then pulling tight yeah that was perfect yeah okay yeah, people will be able to play that back uh, ad nauseum to to see the exact way to do it. Yeah. So blue from the vertical, small loop. The blue from the center goes through, back round on itself, and then psh, pull it tight. Another, another way of looking at it to get kind of the same knot is I usually go the small loop through the big loop, and then after the small loop through the big loop, you take the big loop and put it back through the small loop. And it's a little bit less topsy-turvy, but it does the same thing in the end. Great. Uh, um, okay, so, and then it's the brown loop in the center, so the absolute center of the bridle. You're gonna need to take your 10 centimeter connection loop. You're gonna fold your connection loop in half, so you've got two open ends. We're gonna pass the center of the connection loop through the center of the bridle, so the pink loop, and we're gonna pass the top over the open ends. Okay, and pull that tight, and it effectively, it's, a, it's almost like a reverse locks head, um, but it locks it in, um, and then you should have two open ends coming off the center of your bridle. Okay. Perfect. Um, and now we're ready to attach it to the kite. So give me 10 seconds. I'm going to clear my workspace. Um, should we do the overhead for this, Josh? Is that easier? Yes, please. Yes. Okay, now whilst Josh is doing that, I'm going to come back on here and say, okay, I can see you now. Now you have to donate. Um, 
who hasn't donated yet that's in the chat okay so brian uh i think brian's donating good on you brian um who else is gonna chuck a donation in uh, mark, mark just, just did one. Oh, mark's just donated oh perfect okay that's a that's a great that's a great how much did you donate mark three three pounds ten ten pounds wow okay Perfect. That's right. Three point one tickets. Yeah, three point one <laughs> tickets. Three point one tickets. Okay, that's that's awesome. I'm adding you to the list as we speak. Uh, Chris, I know you've already donated. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Um, okay, so let's have a look at Josh's overhead. Okay, so I'm just going to adjust this slightly. I'm a bit concerned we don't have the super special socks on tonight, Josh. Uh, the super special socks um, are in, in the wash. Um, yeah. I, sorry, I actually sorry. thought they were your build socks, but, you know, my, uh, the I, bubbles burst. Uh, they're my sale sewing socks, and that's Ah, uh, right. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Okay, okay. okay. That explains so, it. Are we ready to go? We're ready. Go for it. Right, so we're going to start with our two open end feet um, in the bridle. And all we're going to do, we're going to go to the hole in the center of the sail, which we made before. We're going to pass one side through the sail. And then at the very closest end to the closest to the open end of the knot you can get, you're just going to do a small overhand knot. And this bit is a bit fiddly. Um, just persevere. Um, I know people that have used tweezers for fiddly knots. So did you say it was just an overhand, Josh? Yeah, just an overhand at the very closest edge to that knot. I think I've been calling them overhead knots, and that's not what they are, is it? <laughs> uh, so that just holds the bridle to the sail. Uh, so now we're going to separate from here. We have two halves of the bridle. So we've got right half and a left half. Um, and this is exactly the same on both sides. So what you're going to do, just separate the legs of the bridle. So the smallest leg is going to the top of the leading edge. The next longest is going to the outer leading edge and the longest is going to the tip. Um, and what we're going to do, we're going to pass this, the loop that we have here through the cap, through the front of the cap. So as the cap faces the front of the sail. And then we're going to pass the open end of the loop over the top of the cap and pull it tight. And that's just going to sit the cap, uh, the bridle onto the cap. Um, it's a little bit of a long shot, but if we just switch to the front camera for a second, um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Is that a clear? Right, so have you guys got a clear view of this? Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Sorry, so, I was muted. I was, <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. If you go nice and nice and slow, just show us nice and slowly. Okay. So for this, no, uh, it's it's the same process for attaching these to the caps, by the way. Um, yep. So you're going to pull the cap out, um, just as it is regularly, so yep. that there's no twist in the bungee. And then through the front of the cap, we're passing through the loop. Okay. Yeah. We're separating the loop once it's through the cap. Yeah. Over the top of the cap. Yeah. And pull tightly. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was very clear. Okay, if we go back to the overhead now. Um, and it's the same process for the tip. Um, so when you're applying to the tip, we're going from the outside, so this edge of the cap. So and we're sliding through the center from the, remember from the outside, same again, separate the loop and pull tight. And that is effectively the bridle on the kite. And we just got to do the same on the other side. Now you, you made a point um, about it being the outside. Yes. Now, if you were to 
bring them does it does it matter so much if if for example you did both on the inside but you just matched and made sure you were you were doing the same for both is it going to make a, a dramatic difference what's the what are we trying to stop or prevent or create by doing that so if they're both on the inside or both on the outside the difference is going to be minimal however if you have one on the outside and one on the inside your caps are going to twist because they are at a 90 degree angle um, and you don't want your caps pulling in different directions because that will distort the sail ever so slightly um, and it's also a different contact point for all it's only shifting it by maybe 10 millimeters you want those contact points to be completely mirrored of each other so that they do uh, so it reacts in the same way does that make sense yeah that makes total sense um, okay so, I'm just so gonna... when well because uh, uh, to be honest uh, embarrassingly so i admittedly when i've i've fitted bridles before i've not necessarily paid particularly close attention to the side that i'm attacking when it comes to the wingtips um so i'm gonna need to make sure i double check that on all of my guys uh when i yeah uh, when i get out to the field again so there we go thanks for the advice josh it's all right um so again it's the same on the other side just pass it through the remember the front of the cap no twists in the bungee open up the loop and pull tight and this is the last leg of the bridle and the last loop. So once this part of the bridle is on, that is the kite complete, uh, the sail complete. So remember, it's from the outside. So coming in from the left, over the top, and the sail is complete. Uh, now we need to frame these things. So yeah, um, we can now take our sails and put them to the side. So we are we are on the verge of having a finished kite. It's it's minutes away at this point. Absolutely. Right. So next we're going to need our five sticks. Uh, what sticks are you using, Josh? Sorry. What sticks are you using? Um. <sighs> okay, I, I've been a bit. I shouldn't have asked that question, should I? <laughs> I actually ran out of P100s, um, so I'm using P90s, but that's going to be uh, swapped out before the sale is sent to whoever wins. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, five sticks and two ferrules. First thing we're going to do, obviously, these sticks are completely the wrong length, um, so we need to cut them down. Um, there's many ways you can do this. Now, I cut sticks using a Dremel, um, which I use a sanding disc. And that what that does is because it's a sanding disc, it actually sands as it's cutting. So you get a nice clean edge, um, but you can use a hacksaw. If you're gonna use a hacksaw, um, it's a good idea to tape around where you're gonna cut so it doesn't split. Um, but be very, very careful if you're using a hacksaw. I, I suggest you use something mechanical. Um, I, I see a certain person is cringing at the idea. I'm guessing he's got a bit of a horror story about that. Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Was that me? <laughs> no. Uh, no, okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean... Yeah, I, I, I don't think Axel is necessarily ideal for, for carbon fibre. No, uh, it's, a, it's a last resort. I mean, it's better last than a resort. bone saw. <laughs> I, listen, as a last resort, actually, instead of a hacksaw, as a last resort, use a sharp knife. And I mean a seriously sharp knife. That's a much okay. better alternative to a hacksaw. Fair enough. <laughs> right, so the rods we need, um, regular sky shark is 82.5 centimeter. We need it down to 61 centimeters. Um, so I've got myself a jig here. Um, I've actually ordered, there's a brilliant thing you can get called an arrow cutter. Um, and you can adjust uh, this blade effectively and cut arrows directly to length, um, which is going to save me a hell of a lot of time. Um, but I, this is my way of um, making sure that my rods are, the, are more so identical to each other. Um, so I've measured out a marking here. Um, and I can see that that is my 61 centimeter marking. Um, so I'm just going to put my sky shark 
into that and using my rotary cutter, um, uh, uh, yeah, my son's cut out that. Um, no, you're, you're still good. You're still good. I'm still, so I've, I've got really bad connection here. It's, it's a bit fuzzy. No, you um, haven't. Yeah. You haven't broken up at all, mate. Not for not oh. for the entire thing. So you're fine. Carry on. That's all right. Um, so there's, I've got speed settings on this cutter. Um, it goes all the way up to ten. Um, I don't know what that correlates to, but I normally have it at half its speed. So if you guys have measurable speeds on these, let me know what you guys find speed wise. But I find half the speed. Um, you get the cleanest cut. So what I'm going to do, my rods are in there. Cut those rotating now. Um, I'm going to mute this while I do this because it gets quite loud. Um, but I'm actually just going to run the, the cutter and rotate the, uh, this rod as I use the blade. And that's going to give me a nice clean finish. Um, so I'm just going to mute this. Yeah, you, you, you mute yourself. And I will talk about him behind his back whilst he's doing so. Um, just as a note, Josh is cutting carbon fiber um, right in front of his face at this moment in time. Um, however, uh, I would highly recommend um, through lots of experience of cutting carbon fiber myself that Very it true. is really, really not. Uh, the shoes aren't the worst bit. Trust me, that, that's, that's a nothing. The shoes, the shoes are, are a nothing. But the, uh, when you cut carbon fiber, you create uh, an exceptionally fine dust that you do not want to get in your lungs um, because it's very difficult to get out of your lungs and it's an irritant. So when you're cutting carbon fiber, do it outside. And um, ideally, a, a really good way of doing it is uh, is wet the carbon fiber. Um, and certainly if you're ever clearing up carbon fiber, we were having a discussion about it earlier. Uh, if you ever... Um, want to clear it up, wet down the surface that you're clearing first, because then you're much less likely to throw dust up into the air. Um, so yeah, damp paper towel under the rod as well to gather dust. Nice suggestion from uh, Chris in the chat as well. Uh, mats, wear yeah, masks. Wear, yes, yes, of course. That, yeah, that most importantly, wear a mask, a good uh, fitting mask. Obviously, we're the number one topic of conversation recently has been all about masks, but do make sure you wear a, a well fitting mask that is going to uh, cover you for particulates. That's the important thing is a particulate mask. So you're not inhaling all of that. Don't do what Josh is doing and yeah, filling his, his studio with uh, carbon fiber dust. I'm sure it'll be fine. He's a professional. Um, or so he tells me. Um, so, yes where are we with everyone else's builds uh have we got any comments any questions i've got i've got one mate yeah go it's, for it the tool that you need for carbon fiber is a fine modeler's saw with fine teeth on it the reason the hacksaw doesn't work is because the teeth profile is way too big get yourself a modeler's saw you can get the blade attachments that will actually go into a scalpel uh, but this is the tool for the job don't use a dremel <laughs> ah right okay so uh, that's that's also very good advice because uh mark is uh he's in the know with this sort of thing so if he's telling you right get yourself a model of saw that's also a good suggestion um and a mask so you i see you're donned up on your mask so we're going to do some cutting now are you mark yes, oh, look, it's a proper proper mask and everything Got it. um right let's check in with uh oh you're back <laughs> oh, you're back. It's all right. We can see you swigging your beer. It's all right. Oh, well, I thought I didn't think the camera no, was No, no. Sorry, mate. Yeah, we had to watch you um, and your health and safety disaster. Um, <laughs> but what I want to do is check in with Rich. Can you hear us, Rich? Yeah, I'm here. I, I got a bit. I got stuck on the bridle. I didn't understand the explanation about how to feed the little the little knot from the verticals through the big, the little knot in the, in the other one. Um, and so okay. I'm going to have to watch it later. To, well, to, I mean, we can, we can, have you got both the, if we, if we said the, the blue knots as reference from both the vertical and the center, cause we're watching, we're watching you right now. So if you grab the uh, blue knot from the vertical, 
This one? Whoops. Yeah, <laughs> on camera. That's it. Excellent. Uh, uh, hang on a sec. Uh, whoops. I'll give you a better camera if I can get it. I'm just confused. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So That's your blue knot, blue knot from your vertical, and one. you're going to take your center. Uh, the blue from your center. Blue from the center is this one. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to pass the blue from the center through. Hold on, Josh. Can you just double check? I'm telling him right. <laughs> So the blue yes. from the center through the blue from the vertical. Yeah, and then you're going to take the, the long loop which you have in your, as uh, it's reverse to your left hand. So that one there you've just grabbed and pass, uh, turn it back over itself and underneath through that, through that gap. Through itself? Yeah, and then pull it tight. Sorry, Ed. Uh, no, no, pull, pull the it. end, pull the end of the loop. Oh, yeah, pull that. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so. That's it. There you go. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, yes. Yes. But I just didn't know which part. No, no, no. You've got to ask. You've got to Thank ask. You. Make sure you ask. Okay, right. Rich, good luck with uh, the rest of your bridal. Uh, what is just sent a very good link uh, for bridal replacement, which goes through in uh, a bit more detail. Um, it's a great link to have. Yes. Uh, let's transpose this. In fact, Wati, can you, can you post that link in the chat for everyone in Facebook? That would be... Yeah, uh, sure. Awesome. And uh, Simon says, oh, no, Josh has got Corona. <laughs> Josh does have Corona. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, I've got the good Corona, though, not the bad. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're nearly finished. We're, like, really nearly finished. Okay. So um, the next thing I'm going to do, um, because um, because I <laughs> foolishly, I break a lot of rods. Um, and the most annoying thing I find is when you break a rod, that's a center rod, um, and you lose two ferrules. I, I really don't like losing ferrules. Um, and I find it really complicated and just a bit of a pain in the backside to um, get ferrules out. So I've actually changed the way that I do ferrules. Now, you guys don't have to adopt this. And if you guys want to use super glue, that's more than, that is actually what I would suggest if you want to have a solid fix. Um, but what we're going to do, um, we're going to mark the halfway point in our internal ferrules, um, which should be at five centimeters. Um, we're going to do that on both. So this would be the point now where I would say, go get your super glue, um, but I'm not going to do that. So I have this trusty tape, which we used to piece the sails together. Um, and the six mil ATG. That's the stuff. Um, and what I do is I actually wrap one half of the ferrule in the ATG tape. Um, and there's a reason behind this. So what you, this enables it to do, it gives it a strong hold because there's width. And what that does is it fills up any gaps within the rod. Um, but it also allows you, if you use a pair of pliers at some point, um, you can not easily, but you can remove the ferrules. Um, do I hear you sniggering there, Matt? <laughs> well, it's the fact that you said not easily. <laughs> so I, I, I can guarantee if it's me, uh, it's definitely going to be ultra not easy. Um, yeah. How much tape did you use, Josh? Um, so I've covered half of it. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to insert it. And you have to use quite a bit of force because there's an extra layer. Um, and push it as far as you can um, to the point where you're at that halfway mark. And actually, you can see that there is a lot of force on that. That's not budging. Um, and yeah, that's the way I do it. But you can. Um, the other way to do it is if you put a small amount of super glue um, in a line on half of it, insert your ferrule and then rotate it so that super glue covers the entire center of the rod. Um, the best super glue to use that I've found is a, I use a Loctite instant dry. Um, but yeah, so either one of these methods, um, but like I say, if you're prone to breaking center rods like I am, um, make it so that your ferrules are not easily, but removable. Okay. 
so that's just born out of frustration of losing ferals. Well, the, the truth behind that is I have a teammate um, who broke a lot of centre tees. And I mean a lot. And we were just throwing away rods left, right and centre. Um, I won't name and shame him, but he knows who he is. <laughs> um, so I wanted to find a way that we could make it easy to remove ferals in these kites. Um, and that's what I found worked. Right. But I, I, I stand by that it is absolutely strong enough for purpose. Yeah, I suppose just uh, um, I certainly don't want to uh, to weigh in on your method, but I just from um, just looking at it where the where you've got the tape, I, it's I'm assuming that that tape is going to bunch up as you are pushing it in the end of the rod, and therefore um, you you're going to get like an uneven contact patch of the ferrule to the. Um, I did think that was going to be the case, but when I started removing these ferrules, it actually isn't. It does stay pretty permanent. All oh, right. Okay. All right. Well, if that, yeah, I mean, that's the, in that case is a fantastic solution. Yeah, for sure. I'm happy to try and remove it. No, show you guys, <laughs> no, 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 no. I trust, I trust your judgment a hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Um, so we have all the components of these kites now. Um, do you guys want to switch to the overhead? And we will have yes, definitely. The... Well, I mean, this is the the glory part. This is the uh, money shot. Is that what they call it? And that's the end of this week's episode. Join us next week. Right. So your sail and your five rods. Uh, so. You need to keep two rods for your verticals um, and three rods for your leading edge. Now, if you're like me, you like your um, your logos on your rods to be the correct way facing as you look at them. So what I do when I'm first putting these kites together, I've got the Sky Shark logo facing towards me. So all the text flows the right way. I'm making up the leading edge. And from one end, just gonna feed it through the tunnel all the way as one piece. Packing up from this end. And this one should be quite tight. And that's on there. I'm gonna flip the kite over. If you this, um, if you get the logos all lined up when uh, you put the rods in, does that that provides additional strength? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, these rods are strong across the entire. That's, that's just for you. That 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 bit's just for you, right? It's but like yeah, wearing yeah. underwear. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you know, uh, you know they'll be lined up once they're in the the kite. Yeah. And that wow, look. is a complete kite. Amazing. Wow. Wow. We've got the fully built mini poles. Wow, it's just awesome. Wow. It's a nice scheme as well. I really like that scheme. Yeah, um, it's a great color combo. Wow. Thank you, Josh. Well done. That Thank was, you so uh, much. Yeah, Another it seemed problem? completely seamless. Now, uh, I think we should go back to rich because let's see he was having some issues with his rods earlier what where are we at <laughs> he's rushing to get, get his rods in how are you getting on rich yeah i loosen my bungees as much as i could and i can get them in but what you can see is there's still a really big i mean I don't know what that is. So, uh, have you have you cut them down? I cut them to sixty one, like you, centimeters, like you said, and it's like yeah, it's uh, more than five centimeters between the the cap and the thing. So, uh, I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I'm gonna have to trim a little bit. Is that on uh, is that on both sides or just one side? 
It's on both sides. Oh, actually, you know what? I do know why it is. It's because the end caps that I'm using, I I ended up uh, ha sticking a ferrule in them because I did not have um, the kind of end caps that go on the outside of the tube, right? So, or my I didn't have the right size end caps, so I put a little ferrule in my end cap. So that's why everything's a little. Sh right. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure that can be remedied by just cutting the rods down. Yep. Right, Josh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you figure out the scale uh, that the ferrule is pushing them beyond, and then do it um, scale like twelve five rods. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, okay, yeah, cool. so let's see. Who wants to show their kite? Come on, we need some. We need some people. Um, who's in the chat? Who wants uh, any? Any questions? Um, John Ellerton says he uses a heat gun to remove ferrules, uh, melts the super glue, and they slide out. Ah, oh, I've never thought of that. Damn. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> to be fair, that's very good. Um, oh, look, okay. So, right, this is, uh, this is one of your last chances to donate. So, if you want to be in a chance of winning one of the two kites that Josh is currently putting together now and has just finished now is the time oh we've got some messages coming in uh okay yeah vasilis we got your donation um jim got your donation anyone else mark is looking pretty good over there oh yes mark sorry didn't see you there uh ha Yep, yeah, it's uh, not the greatest work of art ever, but it all went together. For first attempt, I'm really, really happy. I think that looks good. I can't wait to see that up at the dance. That looks great, Mark. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, nice colour scheme as well. Hey, you've done a you've done a great job on that leading edge. I uh, haven't finished the bridle yet, though, so... Uh... <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that will be finished very, very soon. Uh, what else have we got? got um yeah sadly i've not been i've not been building I've, I've been watching so i'm gonna go back and watch and finish the three kites that i've got um has anyone got any questions can we cover anything else whilst we're here so matt um I, if you have a look now this uh this could be enticing for people to Ooh, donate oh yeah okay so yeah look at that i mean they're pretty cool kites and not only are they pretty cool schemes, but they've been built by the creator, Mr. Josh Mitchison. So, yeah. So they're devalued. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, get your donations in. We, obviously, you can continue donating uh, until until 8 p.m. next Sunday because that as soon as we start, as soon as we start, that'll be it. We will be... Uh, the window for donating will be closed. Um, I think, shall we set a time that we draw this raffle? I think 8.20 sounds like a good time. 8.20, yep, that sounds good. So we'll start the show at 8, prompt, the window will be closed, finito, and then at 8.20 we will start the draw and we will do the draw live on the screen. Um, Peter Jansen says he can't finish his kites. Why can't you finish your kites, uh, Peter? I want to see that. Okay, so everybody, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to all of you that have tuned in. Uh, these live builds have been epic, and we did not expect them to be as good and as popular as they have been. Thank you to everyone that has joined us in Zoom. Chris Meldrum. Thank you to everybody as well. Thank you, Josh. Not a problem at all, mate. Thank you to Mark. Thank you to Rich. It's been great having Rich build his kite along with us. I wish there'd be more of you, but we are, we are going to continue Perfect. doing some live builds in the future, I'm sure. Uh, thank you to everyone that's listened to the podcast. Uh, that's still going and that's fantastic. Uh, we've dropped the podcast down. So it's once every two weeks now, uh, purely because of work um, demands. 
Any anyone got anything else to add? Oh, Watty, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's been nice for you to uh, give us your expert opinion because we know you're a proficient kite builder. So thank you I'm for that glad. as well. Nice to be here as a peanut gallery. I enjoy it. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so I'm really, really looking forward to next week. But if you're going to turn up, you better have a kite to show us. Otherwise, it's going to be trouble. Um, yeah. From me and my other hosts, thank you very, very much uh, for joining us. And yes, there will be more. So keep your ears out next week. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure we wave. Everyone wave. Say goodbye to everyone at home. Good night. Thank Good you night. for coming. Have a great weekend. See you later. Bye-bye.